indispensability of the free market for human prosperity, his realization that our rights are ours by virtue of our humanity, and his dogged determination in the face of the most overwhelming odds that the government must reside within the confines of the Constitution have resonated the world and lit a prairie fire in the belly of millions. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, Congressman Ron Paul. Next week, matter of fact, it'll be this week, I believe it's on Thursday, we will be having a special event on the House floor that Dennis Kucinich and I and others have worked on. It's a long overdue debate. It's a debate on the Afghan war. Like we'll have three hours of debate and then a vote to find out whether they have the legal right to pursue this war. Obviously, they do not have a legal right to pursue a war that has been not declared. I'm not predicting we'll win that vote, but I can predict that a lot more people will start thinking correctly about the war and the perpetual war. One of the provisions that came out of the last administration was this whole idea of preventive war. This is astounding to me. Preventive war means that we initiate the wars. We must once again adhere to the Constitution, never engage in war unless it's declared, and fight them to win them and get them over with, but to stay out the way they can. is that we can't afford them and that it, uh, it undermines our liberties. War, war is the health of the state and the more times you're in war, uh, as long as you're in war, then people are more susceptible to giving up their liberties. And now we're in a state of perpetual war. This has to change. Now the practical answer would be change our minds, change our attitude. I was asked one time in a debate a few years ago, maybe somebody watched it, they said, well, what would you do about these wars? And I said, we just marched in, why don't we just march home? circumstances because this country will be declared bankrupt and that is liable to come in a short order. When that happens, empires collapse. It's happened numerous times over history. We did not have to fight the Soviet Union. They had, you know, the thousands of nuclear missiles and weapons and we did not have to confront them. 
and they disintegrated because they had a flawed economic policy. Well, this country has been operating on under a flawed economic policy now for a good 70 years, and the end is coming, and that is what we're witnessing at the present time. In the and it isn't too difficult to come up with a better system. I go! What, what we need to do is to understand the basic premises of individual liberty. Liberty is the reason for all political action, to restore and preserve liberty. The Constitution is a guideline and one that is supposed to hold the government in check. It's not supposed to hold the people in check. bankrupt is along with the runaway welfare spending here in this country. Now the one reason why I have talked about one little uh, incident uh, that uh, we, we deal with, one little unit, and that's called the Federal Reserve, because it facilitates, it facilitates big government, because it facilitates war and it facilitates the welfare state, and therefore we cannot really survive this with a central bank, and that, of course, is the reason we must end the bank. like so much else will end in this country, it, it will end by default because the laws of economics tell us that you can perpetually defraud the currency, print the paper, and eventually self-destruct and something else will have to be done. And that will be an opportunity for us because then, then is the time for us to know what we believe in and to rebuild this country on the sound principles that we were so fortunate to have at the beginning. Those principles gave us the greatest amount of freedom and the greatest amount of prosperity in the history of mankind. But for quite a few years, and it's probably close to 100 years, there's been a steady erosion of those liberties and a steady erosion of, uh, of, our, uh, of our wealth. So when this comes, the bankruptcy will have to be declared. The reason we're in such a mess in Washington, nothing happens, and in a way that's good, because they're starting to recognize that they can't spend perpetually. They don't know, the, they don't know that yet. They're still arguing how to spend the money. They haven't yet heard our message that the end is here, that we have to quit. how this will come about and, and uh, how it will end. I think it will end not so much that we will end up with the right number of people in Congress and will pass better legislation. It will end with a failure of the state, the failure of the government. And we do talk a lot about uh, secession and interposition and nullification, and these are worthy subjects to talk about. But I think when the bankruptcy comes, when the money fails, when government fails, and we're in the midst of the failure of government, when it becomes evident, the federal government will become very much less relevant because they can't buy.